Let's see. For veterans of real-time strategy looking for a real challenge, the enemy is merciless, calmly attacking on multiple fronts and exploiting any weaknesses. If that's actually true, that's pretty exciting. Uh, getting a good AI that actually knows how to multi-prong is fairly rare. This is Age of Empires 4 as it's meant to be played. We're not no an intermediate scrub. Some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. This is the site of the Battle of Hastings. After almost a thousand years, no traces of the bloody conflict can be seen. But here, the fate of England turned. It's where a king was killed, and his victor claimed the throne. October 14th, 1066. We know what happened here on this day, thanks to this. The Bayer Tapestry. A carefully preserved illustrated record of events. It shows the main players. Harold, the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England. And his challenger, William. Duke of Normandy. William claimed the previous king had promised him the crown. So, he assembled an army and prepared to sail to England to fight King Harold for the throne. But a storm thwarted his plans. Meanwhile, Harold discovered that a Viking invasion had landed in the north another threat to his crown so he raced to fight them in france william waited for the right conditions to sail across the channel to england the weather cleared he seized his chance Two hundred and fifty miles north, Harold had defeated the Vikings. Now, hearing of William's arrival, his army sped south. At nine o'clock in the morning, on this hill, William's Norman army were ready to do battle with Harold's Anglo-Saxon men. The stage was set, and up for grabs, England itself. Birds. Everyone likes burbs. Raw power, when you say that 1066 was your birthday, you don't... You're not that old, right? That would be really impressive. <laughs> I like... I really like the idea of framing this campaign as a documentary style thing instead of being like, haha, we're there and it's happening. Because traditionally, I think that when they do that, they don't do a good job of developing characters or anything. I think this is a very smart way to do it. All right, let's give this a go. Though I do think that it would have been a decent idea to make killing the Vikings be the tutorial on how to play. I don't know. On October 14th, 1066, William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. Alright, let's learn to A-move. Wait, <laughs> that's a very, very lame army. So I don't get any of these. Oh, that's a shame. How do we A move with A? Cool. Oh, they become mine over time. William's Norman army made the first charge, launching a direct assault on the shield wall. 
Too bad I didn't bring all my men. <laughs> Let's see. Trying to figure out if I'm actually supposed to do anything. Leaders have unique abilities they can activate it. Nope. William's army fought fiercely against the shield wall. It would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Mm. Realizing his army could not break the shield wall, William called for a retreat. Oh. Okay, bye. Sorry, I was thinking that the heroes are not particularly visually. The Anglo Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps for William to make a move. They're not, like, super visually distinct. I guess they have the giant halo and the crown. I guess they're visually distinct enough. They're not as distinct as, like, Warcraft 3 heroes, though. With Harold's men no longer in shield wall formation, William could pick them off as they charged. Oh, we are getting absolutely crushed on this side. Why are my archers not firing? Archers! Fire your bows! Come on, boys. We need ya. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Frickin' losers. The cavalry's just, like, hanging out back there. I have no control. I wish this told me the full cooldown always. It's 75 seconds. Okay. Come on, Archies. There we go. The Saxons had deployed rows of spearmen to push back the invaders. But William had an answer. His sharp-eyed archers. What a clever archers. We shoot them. Oh, let me guess. I've done history before. Once they're out of spearmen, then we're just gonna murder them with horses. I am a tactical genius. I'm trying to figure out how these units micro. Uh, the answer seems to be okay. It's... The arrows don't move in a way that feels right to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, this looks wrong to me. Probably because it is wrong. Yeah, this is a very scripted tutorial. There's not much I can do. It's taking a very long time. Men at arms reinforced William's army. Oh, yeah, men with arms. Thank goodness. I've been fighting with men that don't have arms recently. Looks like the left-hand flank is doing pretty well. That means that the right-hand flank is going to need help. Uh, hmm, push priority is interesting. Apparently you can just... William's forces had to eliminate the enemy spearmen, whose sturdy pole arms could easily bring down a horse. Yeah, I saw enough Lord of the Rings to know that would happen. I don't like that you just push your archers into the fray. That's really <laughs> obnoxious. Oh no, Willy! With the threat of spearmen cleared from the field, William's cavalry was free to charge at the Anglo-Saxon archers. Yeah, Willy needs a medic. Would I have lost? It doesn't say that. Thank you, uh, Beautiful Joe, Crimson Blade TV, Paparanga. Wait. Oh no, my mini feed is not up or not updating. That's from days ago. Never mind. Uh, oh, that's bad. I wish the feed would update. The army was in disarray. Their shield wall had been neutralized, and their numbers were dwindling. Now the only thing standing between William and victory was King Harold himself. I'm too scared to kill King Harold. Here, we're going to try to kite with this guy while we fight the rest with the archers. Kill speed is very low in this game. The last of Harold's men encircled their king, prepared to lay down their lives to save his. Oh, we got these guys. Get them, boys. And it does look like my hero unit regenerates HP pretty quickly. I like that. There's always a tricky balance on trying to figure out a good way to do heroes, but look at how fast he regens. Look at how... Okay, it's not fast, but look at the fact that he regens over time. I'm just going to be safe. I'm not going to target fire Harold. Hmm. Okay, so the group that I have selected right here, I have 69 units selected. That's a pretty nice number. 
I'm feeling confident. Here comes Harold. Uh, when I played D and D in high school, there was a recurring character that, whenever we were having a horribly hard time, because the DM would often make things fairly rough, but then would help us out if things were going too hard. Harold the Hero Helper was always a guy that would arrive, and I just I cannot think of anyone besides Harold the Hero Helper whenever I hear the name. The Anglo-Saxon King Harold had fallen. In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death, while others scattered in panic. Goodbye, loyal soldiers. Okay, I do need to check my feet. I'm so sorry. Leaderless and defeated, the last of the Anglo-Saxon army fled for their lives. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king, but William's quest to rule England was just beginning. Well, I think that my feed is just broken. Uh, thank you to everyone that has subbed and stuff. I appreciate it. Oh, unlock content. Building a castle video. Wait, are these just like documentary videos or are these actually things of value that are going to add to the campaign? Well, let's see. At Guédelon in France, to understand how castles were constructed, they're building one from scratch using just the tools and materials of the medieval age. Oh, this is pretty cool. It's a 25-year project. The world's biggest archaeological experiment. The most important defense... Okay, I don't actually want to watch this right now, but I think the idea behind that is really, really sweet, and that adds a whole lot of extra time and playability to this. That is... I'm pretty sure that it is a YouTube video, though. <laughs> They're just grabbing, like, stuff from the old history channel before it became the antique hunters or whatever. So let's continue. Uh, that was a pretty good tutorial, though. It took a bit too long, in my opinion. At the Battle of Hastings, the death of one man changed the course of history. The Anglo-Saxon King Harold was killed here, on England's south coast. His army defeated by William of Normandy. Anglo-Saxon rule was over forever. At Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day 1066, William was crowned the first Norman King of England. Now he had to secure power across the country. He began by stamping his mark on the landscape building cathedrals and castles at strategic locations. Nothing like them had been seen in England before. They reminded the Anglo-Saxon population exactly who was in charge. But not all were content with living under Norman rule. Anglo-Saxon revolts broke out across the country. King William acted quickly to crush these rebellions. But there was one region where dissent was spiraling out of control. The north of England. In 1069, a group of lords from Northumbria formed an alliance with Viking invaders. Together they approached Norman-held York. A large city with an important cathedral, still protected by ancient Roman walls. But the walls couldn't save York. The city and the castle fell to the rebels. William's new kingdom was under threat. He had to get the city back under Norman control. Those horses are not obeying traffic laws. Come on. William had no choice but to order his men north. 
But as the Norman forces set off on their long march towards York, how much resistance from the rebels would they encounter? This is really cool. This is a lot better than I thought it would be. I'll be completely honest. I thought they would end up doing something a lot more generic. They've obviously put a lot of time and thought into how to do it. Really, really impressed so far. I think I always go into games expecting them to not be very good so that I don't get disappointed. But this is the point where I'm getting a little bit, like, ready for action. Super, super pumped. Do I think this game's lore is better than StarCraft 2? Uh, StarCraft 2 is more realistic. So it's hard to compare. 